China's actually started looking at what National is proposing. And um, I don't know if I'd quite go so far to say they're firing some warning shots, but they are taking some interest in the potential next government in this country uh, and what they're saying about uh, Chinese nationals buying in New Zealand. China's warned the National Party it's keeping a close eye on its plan to tax foreign buyers purchasing luxury homes. The party's been under pressure to explain how the plan doesn't breach international rules. Political reporter Amelia Wade was with Christopher Luxon in Hawke's Bay. This is Christopher Lux on. G'day Tom, look it's Chris Luxon from the National Party here mate. His first job campaigning Mike. was to meet with Mike. National Party yeah, royalty farm. farmers. I think farmers have been treated as villains in New Zealand over the last six years. And for the past six days, National... When people say that, I always remind them that the outgoing uh, president of Federated Farmers, when Jacinda Ardern, Ardern retired, said uh, the farmers are losing a friend in Jacinda Ardern. So this narrative has been sold pretty well by the right when the lobby group the the would they be the lobby group the representative group of farmers in New Zealand seems to think that at the very least Jacinda Ardern did well for them and that's that's his words I've had a bit of an episode or two on Twitter today where people are telling me that I'm I'm biased after I've put two quotes out you put the quote this quote here out then this quote there out and then someone says didn't realize how biased you are and I'm like hang on I'm just quoting two different people and asking what's the difference between them. Now I am, well, I'm paraphrasing, but it, but he did say that that Jacinda was a friend of farmers, yet we still have this narrative that you know National is the party of farmers, although I don't know if they're going to be that good for the environment, and surely the environment is good for farmers, Chewy. It's, it's not even the environment. These guys for, for completely forget the Embovis outbreak down here. That national completely fumbled that that they chopped biosecurity um resources and then they had an m bovis outbreak and they completely mishandled containing that outbreak like i i don't see why farmers just completely gloss over that you had farmers yeah. down south that were just having to um, euthanize and burn their entire crop uh, their entire herds and then their farms were quarantined and that was because yeah. of national's mishandling of that. No, but Chewy, but they but they got to reduce their number of Eurocats by 0.1% and put it on a billboard. So, you know, all good, all good. All right, we'll keep going. National's been under pressure over its tax policy. We had advice from experts and lawyers before, and we've continued to talk to experts afterwards as well. So we had advice before on free trade agreements. And then when we realised there was these things called tax treaties that we had no advice on before, we got advice after. And it's a little bit like true. Sometimes we've said this on the show that I can't even think of a good example, but a politician or a public figure will say something and it's either just dumb luck that they hit the right thing with no research or they completely balls up and they try and fit their answer into it. They try and make it true. It feels like they're now trying to make it true national. They're trying to, they've balls up by not getting the, the, uh, the, the advice before they release the policy. And now they're trying to fit the policy into the law rather than making sure they are right with the law and then doing the policy. And it doesn't look like it's working. As we said last night, their expert said, you will be able to tax people from China if they're residents in New Zealand. The legislation says, uh, this is the legislation, the, the treaty says, you cannot tax residents in China. So in other words, they're not residents of New Zealand, so you can't tax them. Although that's national tax experts saying you can tax them if they're New Zealand residents, but they're not. They're Chinese residents or they're Japanese residents or they're Canadian residents. So their expert is actually saying, as long as they're residents of New Zealand, you can tax them. But the treaty says the residents in our country shall not be taxed. So even their own expert, hmm. I haven't seen anyone else pick up on this, but even their own expert is kind of acknowledging that the, that the actual treaty, the legislation, is what um, ha stands up at the moment because they're not they're, a foreign buyer is not a resident of New Zealand by definition. They're a foreign buyer. Um, all right, we'll keep going. Well, 
talked about its plan to bring back foreign buyers, but only for luxury homes with a 15% tax. But National didn't get any formal advice on whether that could breach our tax treaties, especially with China, whose citizens could make up a third of the foreign buyers National needs. And we are very confident and absolutely confident in our numbers and also in our proposal. And China's saying, you better be. The Chinese ambassador told you News Hub we're be. studying the specific details and implications and hope the final legislation is consistent with the agreements that we've signed. Are you worried about how China might react to it? No, I'm not. Why not? Uh, I'm not because we, we, we are very confident that actually we have done the work. The clause in so, so this is the horse shit bit. We are very mm. confident we've done the work. Hang on, Mr. Luxon, you didn't do any work on tax treaties before you released it. How you can you be very you've confident done you've done the work if you didn't do any of it until days after you released the policy? In other words, no work was done. So this is a politician saving face. You know what? I would have more respect if they went, you know what? We didn't, we, we, there was a, a something we missed, but we're confident on reviewing it that it's still fine. That's not what they're saying. They're saying we did the work. And they didn't. They simply didn't. And we know they didn't. And they've said they didn't. You know, uh, Nicola Willis said on, on uh, Q&A, subsequently, we've spoken mm. to experts around treaties. So this is the actual legislation that, um, is it news how we're watching? Whatever, the news is, is talking about. In our treaty, which would let us tax Chinese buyers as a promise not to discriminate on the grounds of nationality, says the National Party's preferred tax expert, Robin Oliver. As a sovereign country, we can tax anybody how we like. But Labour has its own preferred tax experts who say if that's the... So what that means is we can um, we can break a treaty. Yeah, we can tax whoever we want. Of, of course we're a, a sovereign country. Yeah. A sovereign country can do whatever we want. It doesn't free us from consequences. Yeah, exactly right. What are the consequences and from breaking Luxon that treaty? loves consequences. So why <laughs> is he not saying this one? Like this is right. this is my whole feeling on all of this, right? Is is that they're just like they've come up with this down at the backbencher, and that they haven't thought of cause and effect. They haven't thought of unintended consequences. They haven't thought of 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 anything outside of this will play well on the electorate. This will get us in. I wonder how those farmers will feel. Should national be government, they introduce this policy and then China goes, well, we're pulling out of the free trade agreement. How will that make farmers exporting product to China feel? I wonder. Milk I just wonder. solids? No. No, don't need powdered milk. Um, mm. You'll have to find another market as big as ours. All right. This is, uh, this is the Labour Party now saying what their experts are saying the case, some Kiwis could be taxed. That's a shambles. Uh, this was a dodgy policy from the beginning. So that's why it's called a foreign buyer tax ban. Yep. Um, and You're certain about that? Yes. Is that how you've structured yes. it? Yes. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Really? But Robertson says if the Nats argument rests on the non-discrimination clause, that means any Kiwi who's lived overseas so long they're a non-tax resident here will have to pay the 15% tax too. We could say, well, there's an exemption for people who are New Zealand citizens. That's fine. National, I've got a big... Now, that's quite important. Remember, that's National's tax expert basically saying, in my, okay, in my opinion, basically saying Labor's correct because what he said was we could include another clause which would cover that. Now, why would you have to include another clause to cover that if Labor was wrong? Listen to what he says again. To pay the 15% tax too. We could say, well, there's an exemption for people who are New Zealand citizens. That's fine. National. So why would you have to exempt New Zealand citizens if Labour wasn't correct in their analysis? Because New Zealand citizens would already be exempt. Just just a ponderance there for someone to answer for us. Got a big problem with their policy if the only way they can make it work is by trying to get the other side to agree to a carve out. This is a good proposal and a good plan. A plan that Luxon will likely spend a lot more time defending. Well, Amelia joins us now from Napier. Kia ora, Amelia. How was Christopher Luxon's first day on the campaign trail? 
Well, he used it to come here to the Bay to announce that National would spend $7 million on setting up a cyclone recovery ombudsman who would resolve complaints. He was also totally on form, the epitome of an Energizer campaign bunny. He was relentlessly on message. He was running across the street to say hello. I don't think a single hand went unshaken. And at one point, he almost got a facial. He was so excited to check out a local business. However, the challenge for him now will be to keep Crazy. up that relentless energy for the next six weeks. Yeah, I was wondering what that meant as well. He got a facial. I saw you how you looked at that because that means something very different in certain circles. He tried it's, to have a. He tried to shake hands and he got a facial. I'm not entirely sure what that means. I, I, I mean, maybe the voter that he was meeting was really excited about meeting. Totally Chris excited and, and gave him a facial. Um, very very odd. Um, a, a thought I've just had. Right. So something we discussed about natural uh, national. Well, a few weeks ago, right, is how they were going to fund a lot of their roading projects, possibly with the help of China. Yep. You know, buy in however misguidedly into their Belt and Road project. How does that work with simultaneously? Can we please have money for bridges and roads? And also, fuck you guys. This agreement that we've thrashed out over, I assume, years and years and years is now toilet paper because yeah. we've made some other promises. Like, yeah. It's, and, and, and I can see the other thing, right? They're getting absolutely lashed on this because it's not going to work. So, and we know the numbers aren't going to work. And if they walk away from this, then this leaves, we're still going ahead with, with our tax cuts. We're just going to have to cut services even harder than we planned. And even harder than if this goes in and our numbers aren't right. Like, this is, this is a disaster. Yeah. It's a slow motion train wreck. Yeah, and look, it's it's you're you're completely right, Chewy. I I, I think that's exactly it. Um, um, Nicola Willis really frustrated me in the Q and A program where she went, "Look, let's be serious," and she started talking about how Ch you know giving Chinese nationals an opportunity to buy. Of course, China is going to be into that. I just look. I'm not going to kind of do you know the 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 reds under the bed or anything that kind of stuff from the blooming ancient past but i don't get the feeling that the chinese government in general is altruistic and are happy for their um for their citizens to be taken advantage of just to let them back in our marketplace and i think we've already seen that with that report that was from last night but that we show tonight they're like we're keeping an eye on you guys and i think it's going to be i i, I think it's going to be bad i, I think that, the, uh, the, that, that the numbers government. don't work and there's going to be a flow on effect from it. And like, as you say, once they've made that guarantee, which they have, Nicola Willis again did it in the weekend. If they have to find that money and they can't find it from foreign buyers, they'll find it from um, cutting or selling. Traditionally, Chinese governments kept a very close eye on the national party with a former trained spy in, in the national party. You can't get more obvious than that. Like th th this is, this is a house of cards that they have built. Every time we kind of flip one out, we find another piece of information. I I saw something today that was very interesting. Yeah, There is a development happening in, I think it's Central Otago in Winton. Um, it's a big housing development because Central Otago is sort of blowing up, right? Stephen Joyce is on the board and pretty much every house in that development is expected to go for more than $2 million why do you think that they would be doing something like this to encourage foreign overseas buyers to come in and buy expensive houses again? Like it just, it, there's vested interests everywhere in this. It's, it's this and, is, and he was involved in the sky city thing as well, which you this know, is not from, of, this is not from today, but it says this is from uh, June big boost for Winton land. Yeah, X finance. This is a Joyce becomes director resource consent win. Yeah. Is that what they're building in Winton? Yeah. yeah. Good Lord. So, yeah, National will lift foreign buyer ban for houses over $2 million to afford the tax cuts. This outfit that has Stephen Joyce on the board wants to build homes that mainly sell for more than $2 million. National supports this guy in his legal fight to build. He, uh, This is, I guess, someone involved in this development as well, who is also, a, um, has done big, big donations to National with a former National MP on the board. It's 
it's crazy like that that area will blow up there's lots of things happening this is why there's also been a big push for a new airport in Taris. it's 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 just a web and, and joyce was also involved in in the discussions with sky city about these overseas gambling websites one other thing i i don't know too much about the story i haven't read too much into it yet but i just scrolled down and i saw one line that says uh rnz reported this month how cash grab waikato university had paid nearly one million dollars to joyce advisory so he's got his 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 um his nose in that money money oh money, is it is money that for the new doctor training facility yeah rnz obtained records detailing well. doesn't Dozens of invoices from that business to Waikato University between December 2019 and December 2022, totaling $966,000. Tertiary Education Union organizer at Waikato University, Shane Vulgar, great name, said the union was shocked and appalled by the amount of money the university had spent on Joyce Advisory. There you go. Wow. So you ask what the, what what they do. And, and, you know, just remember all the criticism of Jacinda. Oh, she's going on a speaking tour. Hello. You know, she's someone she's someone who's done something and achieve something this guy yep he was in he was in government but he was never a prime minister but he seems to be doing pretty well for himself so you, off the back of that you got paula bennett and stephen joyce running around just lining up skittles for national it's it's, it's crazy